You're looking at the internet at work. Jim's surfing for a date on seven dating services. Harry has the stock ticker scrolling across his screen all day. Annette is in the last throes of a bidding war for a Wonder Woman lunchbox. David is downloading today's player stats for his fantasy football team. Carol's checking career opportunities with other employers. And Frank? Me, uh, <clears throat> never mind what I'm doing. If that's the internet at work, when does the work get done? It's time for people using the internet and email on the job to put the work back into network and get smart about internet use. Get net smart. Our organization had problems, big problems. The biggest was productivity. Month after month, too many people were not getting the job done. And there were systems problems. One day, the internal network would be gridlocked. Next day, critical services would be swamped. Didn't take a genius to connect these problems and low productivity with the fact that internet use was going full blast. So they called me in to see how much of it was work-related by looking at what people were doing online on the job. Are we allowed to do that? Absolutely. Everybody had been put on notice that office internet use may be monitored. Can we do it? Better believe it. Everything anyone does online leaves tracks, even after internet history is cleared and message files are deleted. They can be traced, recovered, and read. What do we find out? Plenty. Excessive personal use, for starters. Take Stephanie. Personal use going overboard. Oh, busy week, Steffi? Ugh, killer. Can't seem to get through it all. I just don't know where the time goes. We do. Stephanie was clicking away online all the time, but her average workday didn't ever seem to produce a day's work. When we looked at the logs of her website visits and email for several weeks, we could see why. She had a dozen things going on her desktop at all times, but only half of her activity was work-related. The other half? One moment she'd be in a bidding war on an auction site, next she'd be making electronic stock trades, then she'd be shopping for a deal on a new car. Automobile rating sites, dealer sites, auto loan sites. After lunch, she'd be searching for package vacation tours. Then there was email, which we recovered from the group server. All day, Stephanie's work was punctuated by email messages. Half of them were personal, like this one. At 9.31 from her sister, welcome back. How was the cruise to Cancun? Meet anybody? At 10 a.m., she sends her sister a three-page letter in reply. Meet anybody? Did I ever? First day out, there's this cool-looking guy, Kenny, attending some kind of ocean-going conference. We hit it off. During breaks in his meeting, we were having our own meetings in the lounge. Five exotic days, four glamorous nights later, we're back home tying up at the dock, exchanging phone numbers and email addresses, and Kenny says, when can he see me again? And if a woman and two kids meet him at the gangplank, could I make like we don't know each other? How do I find such losers? And it goes on. After that, we can see she's on the net all day, shopping, surfing, emailing. Then, at 4.40 p.m., it's Ken from Cancun. Steffi, you were the greatest. When can I see you again? 4.41 p.m., reply to sender. Your ship sank, Kenny. Get a lifeboat. Get a life. But you already have a life and a wife. Give my regards to her and the kids. P.S., Follow these steps. Go to your address book, select my email address, click on delete. That's just one set of messages in a total of three hours, 38 minutes of non-work-related online activity. Nearly half of an eight-hour shift. And this day, as we can see, is not unusual for her. A little personal use is one thing. Some employers allow it within reason, but this, is going overboard. Employers are watching internet activity. They're watching the clock. They're monitoring non-work-related use, and they're calculating the cost. 
They're enforcing guidelines for personal use. They're disciplining misuse. And they're blocking access to certain websites. And where these steps fail, pink slips are being handed out. One more point. If you work on any contract or subcontract for the government, your time has to be accounted for. If hours actually spent on personal internet use are claimed as work hours, and those hours are included on timesheets submitted for billing, that may constitute fraud. And that could put your employer's standing as a government contractor in danger. Dave worked long hours. A coworker said, the guy is a grind, doesn't go home until 9 or 10 at night. What a rat race. For all that, he was a low producer. Turned out Dave's rat race was more of a mouse race. Dave's inbox files had over 100 recent messages from some strange usernames, like Commander Pluto, Dr. Doom, Sticks and Stones, Charon, D-Man, and Dante. The subject lines alluded to his becoming a lord of the inner ring. They were addressed to Count Hellenbach. I thought I'd stumble onto some kind of cult. When I checked Dave's internet logs, I found that every day, for hours a day, he was visiting a website called eInferno.net. eInferno turned out to be an online computer game. Players descend through a maze of tunnels to the underworld, then they cross nine circles of fire by vanquishing their enemies and condemning them to one of the nine rings of torment. Very cool. Dave, Count Hellenbach, had been competing with E-Inferno players around the world, stretching game sessions through whole afternoons into overtime hours. He got so good, he became part of an international geek elite, a lord of the inner ring. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what brought him to our attention. Logging on, goofing off. Those were the exact words of Dave's performance review. The only website he'll be logged onto for a while is Job Search. Any openings for account Hellenbach? I don't think so. There's no place on the job for people who log on to goof off, play games, manage fantasy athletic teams, follow sports results, day trade stocks. Any internet addicts out there? Get help. Even with today's technical advances, internet and intranet traffic can flood a system beyond its capacity. Susan Pirro was Carol's best friend at work. In a few days, Susan would turn 30. Carol emails Susan's friends in other departments and outside the company. Susan Pirro turns 30 on Wednesday. Her birthday cake will have enough candles to burn the house down. Join us for the conflagration. Email a birthday card to Susan Pirro's pyro party by 11.59 a.m. Wednesday. Friends on the list thought the idea was cool, so they forwarded it to their friends, and they forwarded it to their friends. They forwarded it to their friends. By noon, hundreds of party crashers Carol never heard of were sending greetings. Greetings were automatically forwarded to Susan at work, and replies went to every sender with a streaming party video. 4.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.5.
She visited a website named digupdirt.com every day, and her incoming email file included a folder titled Dirt. Linda was running a desktop dating service for a fee from one of our desktops. And for a fee, Linda would dig up the dirt about any individual and send it to subscribers. One report we read included a man's social security number, five changes of address in a two-year period, some bounce checks, an IRS lien, and court records of default on childcare payments. She was sending it to his girlfriend. We wondered, where was Linda digging up data like that? An audit found she accessed our credit report services far more than would be normal for her job. The credit reports she was getting matched the dirt she was selling to her subscribers. That's what the spreadsheets on her monitor had been covering up. Linda was guilty of, one, abuse of the company's internet access to operate her own outside business, two, misuse of services such as credit reporting, and three, violation of privacy laws and confidentiality agreements by disclosing personal data. It goes without saying, Linda no longer works here. Internet access at work should never be used to conduct web-based activity for another business entity or to go into business for yourself. In-house and purchased external services should be accessed only for the intended business purpose. Internet use should comply with all confidentiality and privacy laws. One day, Jim received a mystery message from someone named Freddie. Open ASAP, need comments by noon. It had an attached graphic file. Jim didn't know any Freddie in the company, but he opened the file anyway. That was his first mistake. Jim's first reaction was, whoa. His second reaction was to hit delete before anyone else saw what was on his screen. That was his second mistake. Messages like that should be reported, not deleted. Many people who received the same email reacted like Jim, hit delete. A few saved and forwarded the file, and everyone talked about it. Every few days after that, an ordinary-looking email would turn out to be another, you've got porn. All over the company, people were passing around the latest raunchy jokes and top 10 lists from Mr. X-Rated. Some workers complained of sexual harassment due to the atmosphere in the office. The CEO emailed everyone a strong warning. Internet misuse that creates a hostile work environment will not be tolerated. But the mystery email escalated to pornography that was increasingly offensive and to racist jokes, ethnic insults, and anti-gay tirades. We checked pornographic or hate sites, monitored any visits traceable to this office, and found Frank. He spent half his work time visiting websites that were off-limits. To cover his tracks, he would access a permitted sports or shopping page and link from there to an adult site. He would download from that site to his own off-site email account. Then he'd delete this activity from his office internet files. He thought he could throw security off his trail. Wrong. All of what he was doing on the net was traceable and readable. In fact, I monitored what he was doing on his computer while he was doing it. And that is an invasion of privacy. You can't Frank just protested privacy. that our looking into his web surfing and personal messaging was an invasion of privacy. He threatened to sue, but the company was exercising its legal right to investigate any activity on the internet access it provided. Frank's lawsuit went nowhere. The only thing that went anywhere was Frank. He went out the door. There are websites that are absolutely off limits at work, sites that offer sexual material, Sites that defame race, gender, religion, politics, classes of people or individuals with material ranging from jokes and cartoons to commentary. Sites that contain reckless, malicious writing, threats of violence, or plans to break the law. If you receive a message with content like this or links to sites like these, one, close the message. Two, do not delete the message. It may be evidence. Three, Report the incident to system security, human resources, your legal department, or to your in-house hotline. On the internet, you have no control over what happens to a message once you click on send. Within minutes, your words may be copied, altered, or forwarded, sometimes to hundreds of locations. Spies, competitors, legal adversaries, reporters, hackers, and others 
scan news groups, bulletin boards, and chat rooms to pick up bits of confidential information. At NMFCC, sensitive information leaked like a $3 showerhead. Most of the leakage was traced to what I call yacker nets. A big lawsuit began with a careless leak of information that spread on the yacker nets. It's a good example of how easily leaked information can fall into the wrong hands and do a lot of damage. In an association forum, Annette mentioned her department had a job opening for a service manager to replace Waldo Chessio. That was normal grapevining until someone in the forum asked, what happened to Waldo? At that point, Annette divulged two bits of confidential human resources information. One, she said he was fired. That led someone else to ask why. And Annette blurted out, his performance evaluation called him useless. The evaluator actually wrote, if we keep Waldo as an employee, we'll deprive a village somewhere of an idiot. Others in the forum thought that was hilarious. They added their own performance evaluations. If you give Waldo a penny for his thoughts, you'll get change. If Waldo's IQ goes as high as 50, he should sell. If Waldo were any more planted in place, he'd have to be watered twice a week. The comments were copied and pasted in messages to friends. They added comments and forwarded them again. Within days, Annette's leak and ad lib comments from all over the corporate world were popping up everywhere, compiled in chain email, posted on the web, circulated on intranets, and printed and passed around as lists of Waldo jokes. But Waldo was no joke. He was a person with a lawyer. Waldo sued us for defamation, slander, and disclosing private information. During the legal process called discovery, the lawyer scanned the website chat room and traced the defamatory chain letter back to Annette's disclosure of Waldo's job evaluation. That slip cost us plenty. You need to be careful what you say, who you say it to, and who else might be tuning in. That's especially true in handling classified data and message traffic and programs that require government security clearances and are subject to security audits. Encrypt sensitive messages or files according to security policy before sending. Never open documents and executable files attached to email from unknown outsiders. They can expose the entire system to virus or hacker attack. Use secure passwords to protect access to confidential files and lists of email addresses. Change your password at intervals. Keep your password secret. Keep computers secure. Follow information security guidelines if you're doing work on a personal PC at home, a laptop on the road, a dial-up connection, or transporting data on storage media. Once in a great while, when we run across some very suspicious network activity, we have to pull out all the stops. You'd be amazed at what that involves. In one case, we got an anonymous tip on the in-house hotline. Check out Harry's internet logs. Something funny is going on. We monitored Harry for a week. Some of his online activity went through a password-protected website on his own home computer. Many messages and attachments were encrypted with his own software. We couldn't decipher anything. Security suspected several possible problems. Harry had a high-level clearance and access to closely guarded data. What if he was spying or passing along confidential information or diverting company assets or gambling or bookmaking? Whatever he was doing, he didn't want us to open it, and we couldn't because it was encoded with unauthorized software. So I installed software that captured Harry's keystrokes before his computer encrypted them. We could display Harry's every online move, moment by moment. We watched for a whole day. There was a problem, all right, a very serious problem, which we turned over to the proper authorities. Later that same day, Harry received a very unpleasant surprise. The case is now in the hands of law enforcement. Some misuses of network connections can bring charges of illegal activity. For example, identity theft, the unauthorized use of someone else's web access or user ID. That could be computer fraud or theft. For example, if the ID is used to purchase goods or services, or disclose information rated company confidential, or classified secret or higher by the government. Copyright infringement. Just because something is on the internet doesn't mean that it's public domain. 
Don't copy or make unauthorized or unlicensed use of copyright protected material, software, text files, data, photographs, cartoons, art, music, games, books, articles. What we're talking about here is not simply breaking rules, it's breaking the law. There are state and local statutes against computer crime. Internet assisted crimes bring heavy penalties under the Federal Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Violators can face sentences of up to five years in jail and fines of $250,000 per count. Are you shocked that someone like me is privy to personal internet use and messages? Don't be. When you go online at work, it's not a private line. All kinds of people, insiders and outsiders, may be looking at your internet logs and message files. Your online words or activities may end up anywhere, even read in court or printed in the press. Your internet access at work is a business connection. Some personal use may be permitted by some employers, but be sure you know the limits. Excessive non-business activity costs employers thousands of dollars per person per year. Misuse of internet in the workplace may be cause for restrictions on use, discipline, dismissal, sometimes even prosecution. Big trouble for you and your employer. Definitely not net smart.